Hey everybody, it's Corey Ballot, and I'm here today to talk about another episode of Unsung. Before I get into this video here, I want you to do all the good things that we do on YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Oh, I think I'm supposed to be looking over here so hard not to look at myself when I'm doing these videos. I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want you to like the video. I want you to share the video. I want you to follow me on social media. I want you to visit my website. My blog, um, CoreySong.blogspot.com, where I've been writing a lot this year on there. So go ahead and check that out. Check out, check me out when I'm on social media, all those things. So yeah. So I'm just getting back on YouTube, and um, I had planned out a, a couple of videos uh, way back, way back, way, way back. Um, and I was waiting for a more opportune time to post them up, but it just got out of hand and, um, you know, like what the heck, just put them up. Um, so before I had done some little summarizing of episodes of Unsung, which is a TV show where they explain the history of different music artists that um, throughout history, um, that didn't make it through a certain period in time so people might not know about them and so they do this show to recognize their contributions to music um and I had done some before and I had done this one and I had wrote it out earlier and I was gonna try to practice it a little bit but I'm just gonna read it and just get this video out and um that's gonna be it uh so, got me a little notebook here, a little college rule. Can't see this, the light. I don't like the, well, this is my first time, my first day recording this in this room. Um, and so I am trying to figure out, I was gonna set up my video where I could um, record on the other side of the room, but the light was not very good over there. And so I put it over here, the light was way better over here, but it's still above me, like it's cutting off my head and stuff like that. I don't know, I have to try to figure out the lighting situation, um, but this was the best case scenario at the time, at this time, so I'm gonna go with it. And you're gonna like it. Okay, so I got my notebook and I just had my little notes. I had to write out a little summary, like I was gonna be a, TV narrator, um, and uh, so I'm just gonna read it off. <laughs> so, this episode of Unsung was about Rolls Royce, the group Rolls Royce from the 70s. So, so I started it off like this. This is how it went. Today's episode was the story of Rolls Royce. I need to look over here at this camera. This camera. This spot right here it's about Rolls Royce who rose to fame in the 1970s there were three guys there were three guys who grew up in LA South Central LA who were Kenny Copeland Henry Garner and Freddie Dunn and they all lived on the same block during their childhood which is really cool so as we as we know from media in South Central LA was a rough environment and there was a gang violence around there was gang violence surrounding them and they said you basically had two choices you growing up there you had to join a gang or become a musician so they chose to play instruments and when they got to high school they decided they wanted to form an ensemble like earth wind and fire they wanted to be like earth wind and fire that was their um their um their icon their legend their their main inspiration uh earth wind and fire well for, for good reason okay so so they went and searched to find five other musicians making them eight in total and named themselves total concept and unlimited total concept unlimited that's what they named themselves total concept unlimited sorry i can't read um and they wanted everyone to share vocals with no leads. So everybody in the group could sing. They wanted to 
wanted to share the, the lead vocals, separate them out. Okay, they wanted the instruments to be the star, which was very common. Um, reading that I'm adding a little commentary as well, which was very common back in the 70s. You had all those groups, something like Earth, Wind, like Earth, Wind and Fire, where it was like 100 people in the group and they, uh, they played instruments, they had long um, solos and the albums were like, like a lot of musicianship, a lot of instrumentation. Um, but then they started moving away from that, making it electronic and all this type of stuff. But back in the 70s, this is the way it was, right? I lost my place here. And then they wanted the instruments to be the star. They landed an audition with a singer named Edwin Starr, looking over here, and were, and were, and were hired as his backing band. Okay, Edwin Starr eventually introduced them to the songwriter and producer Norman Whitfield. And Norman Whitfield wrote and produced many hit songs for classic Motown artists such as Marvin Gaye and The Temptations. Okay, and this at that time Whitfield was excuse me venturing or uh, venturing away from Motown and establishing his own record label Whitfield liked them and signed him them to his label once total concept unlimited was signed Whitfield had a member a master plan okay so this reminds me of TLC story in this way this is stuff that I wrote I'm right I'm reading it and I also included my little commentary in it, and I was just gonna read it off. I was gonna try to like um, maybe edit something together. Um, now that I've been seeing these other vi um, I've been seeing these other YouTubers like do these whole documentaries, and they're really cool. But I don't have time to do all that, so <laughs> not gonna do that. Just gonna come and sit down with you. Anyway, the he the mastermind. Uh, so I'm reading my commentary as well. Anyway, the mastermind kind, uh, kind of like Pebbles. He took what he had learned from Motown and began to mold them into the supergroup that became Rolls Royce. He thought they needed a female lead singer, so they found Gwen Dickey. They moved, they moved them into his house and wait, they? Did I say they? I'm sorry, I can't write either. I can't read. I can't write. What did I say right here? He, it says he, 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 that, made, that makes sense. He moved them into his house and worked with them and Gwen. He gave Gwen a makeover and made sure they had great costumes when they performed. Then he named them Rolls Royce and remembered Gwen and renamed, he renamed Gwen Dickey Gwen Rose. They were signed on to the record to record the soundtrack to the movie Car Wash. Okay, Whitfield made sure everything was perfect during recordings. He made sure the album was well balanced with different types of songs and had Kenny sing lead on some songs to balance out Gwen. Kenny Copeland, which was the, one of the original members of the group. Um, yeah, I keep losing my place. They said he would have them redo things for hours until they got it right. The studio engineer stated that they had to record 76 different versions of, of the song Car Wash on the episode. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, I was just watching this interview um, with Missy Elliott. She was saying that um, Timbaland had had her do redo um, Work It five times. So. This is 76 times, 76 times. Okay, just to show you how much of a perfectionist he was, what, he had a strong vision and he wanted to make them into, sculpt them into his, um, his masterpieces, whatever. Okay, he just made sure everything was cohesive and made sure that they stood out. The Car Wash soundtrack was a big success, and they went on to have two other commercially successful albums. The band was having issues, though. Okay. Make eye contact, right? 
they did not oh, find my place. They did not always agree with Whitfield's decision. As I said earlier, they were against a lead singer, so they did not like the attention Gwen was receiving from Whitfield or the public. Gwen felt like the members of the band were attacking her, and Whitfield felt like she was the star, and they were dispensable. He could get more musicians to fill their spot. They also started to find out that they might be entitled to more profits. Okay, it's a classic story. You know, musician story, artist story, the publishing deals were horrible, and all that. But Whitfield, much like Pebbles, uh, ooh, what's this word right here? Or LaFace or Arista did give them gifts and paid for expenses that they didn't realize cut into their budgets. And that's just not LaFace. The, they did that for a lot of people. I mean, that's just the way the music industry was. And, um, a lot of times they would pay for different things, but it would come out of your budget. So you would think you were getting like gifts, but they weren't really gifts. It was all um, you know, included in your little budget for being an artist on their roster. And um, you would pay it back um, once you recorded and touring and all that and merchandise, blah, 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 down the line, all that. You would pay it back. Finally, Gwen ended up leaving the group on the episode members felt, no, members of Rose Royce said she was fired. She states she left on her own because of all the fighting and the group ended up suing Norman Whitfield and Whitfield Records. A lot of dispute on whether, which, what happened, did she leave, did she get fired? They sued Norman, yeah. After the split, they weren't commercially successful and they weren't in demand. This was after um, Gwen left. So they tried to go on without Gwen, but they weren't successful without her as the lead vocalist. And, yeah, so they weren't in demand for several years. Some members left the band and formed, found work as session musicians. Then things turned around. There was a, re a resurgence in appreciation for their hits. Madonna and Faith Evans covered Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Mary J. Blige covered I'm Going Down. Beyonce covered Wishing on a Star. The theme song to Car Wash started being played at NBA games and the group began touring again. Gwen moved to London and has a solo career and has also remade some of Rolls Royce's hits. This episode of Unsung was a testament to some of the pros and cons of, super, of a super, produ super producer and a visionary for an act, an example of why groups fall apart. So that was me just summarizing what had happened in that little episode really quickly. Uh, so, yeah. Also about that song, um, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, Mary J. Blige, I think, also recorded that. And there was, um, like, some interviews about with Mary J. Blige or Faith Evans or both of them, I'm not sure. But it was said that it was they had a falling out. It's always been rumored that um, Mary J. Blige and Faith Evans have had a falling out. I don't know why. Nobody knows why. They don't really talk about it. But um, one of the scenarios that was put out into the public was that they fought over that song, Love Don't Live Here Anymore. Um, Faith Evans had recorded it and she put it on her first album, her debut album. And Mary J. Blige, I, I guess she recorded it for like either uh, um, My Life or the third album, the Share My World album, I don't know, or whatever. Um, and they had a, f or they had recorded it together for Faith Evans' album and Mary J. Blige was cut off of it or something. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, I went to go see Mary J. Blige earlier this year and she sung the song live um i don't know but yeah that was the that was that um that was rose royce um norman whitfield um their manager and their uh, he basically sculpted them into 
his own thing I'm supposed to be looking over here and you know it had pros and cons to that it was bad it was good because he had all that experience and he made them into something very unique but then it's like as an artist um, you know when somebody has like all that input over you what does that do to you creatively um, and you could see that it caused them to fall apart because he had a vision of you know this star lead vocalist that's not what they had envisioned for the group initially and um, caused a lot of conflict it ended up that they broke up and destructed so yeah that was the episode and that's it so I'm out of here this is Corey Ballard I want you to subscribe to this channel like this video um, comment um, share it follow me on social media visit my blog CoreySong.blogspot.com um, I'm on Twitter I'm on Instagram Corey Ballard I have two Instagrams I have one for my poetry it's Corey Ballard Corey Ballard Poet and then just Corey Ballard so those two I'm on Tumblr. I've been putting my stuff up on Tumblr, my poetry as well. Um, and I'll see you guys later. Let me do my little outro thingy.